So during the emergency net in North Carolina on the very famous W4HTP repeater, it's become famous at this point in time, their signals are broadcast or retransmitted on Broadcastify. So people from all over the country, perhaps all over the world, have been listening to the emergency communications traffic from the W4HTP repeater. But during the net, during the wellness check net, this is a very informal net. In fact, there's a comment in this article I'm about to read you about that. During the net, someone unlicensed checked in and asked for help. And how do you think ham radio operators respond to that? This is another article I found on Reddit, and I actually found this while I was recording the last video I recorded about um, the post-Hurricane Helene emergency communications net that's happening on both 40 meters and on two meters and in the area and how there's multiple needs in the area. And I, it sounds like I've been listening to Broadcastify part of the day today. It sounds like they're starting to get stuff cleaned up over there. So hats off to everybody involved in that. But this is a good article I wanted to share with you. This comes from Sonic Residue. That's the poster's name. I was listening to the Disaster Recovery Net in Charlotte, North Carolina on W4HTP repeater today. First, hats off to Net Control for doing such a great job for so many hours and the hams that participated. It seemed to be really well run and a fair amount of important traffic was handled. Agreed. I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. In fact, I emailed one of the Net Control operators and I said, this was great. Thank you for doing this. And he was also in a news article from his local news TV station, I think. And it was uh, put on YouTube later. So I, I shared that in my last video. The original poster goes on to say, It was interesting to hear an unlicensed operator and how smoothly it went. I suppose under these conditions, it would be a bona fide emergency and unlicensed operation forgiven. Correct. Yes, that is correct. That's one of the test questions on the very first technician test. There was a guy who was calling into the repeater from a local VFW post or some, or some other fraternal organization. He was trying to contact a specific person at the National Guard in hopes of getting a water truck to their location. The message was repeated and passed along. When the net control asked for his call sign, the guy admitted he didn't have one. Now, short tangent here. Short tangent, not a tangent, but sidebar. The reason net control asked for a call sign was not necessarily to make sure he was licensed. It was for record keeping. Okay, because when these nets are run, a record of everyone who called in is kept for later diagnosis, reporting, whatever. Okay, so um, if someone calls in late, if someone calls in the next day and says, oh, I was wondering if Dan over in this county has been hurt with call sign, blah, blah, blah. I wonder if you guys have heard from him. I haven't heard from him in two days. Oh, yeah, Dan checked in yesterday at 1322 Zulu time. Here's what he said, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a record keeping thing. This is not a gatekeeping. This is a record keeping, okay? That's why Net Control asked for his call sign. The Net Control didn't really say anything, and other than a call to the fellow in question to say his message was relayed, nothing else was heard. So Net Control asked for his call sign. He said, I don't have one. He's like, okay, that's fine. Nothing else was heard. Uh, the original poster goes on to write, I don't know what the status of the phones and internet was for the unlicensed operator, but admittedly, he handled himself well and didn't disturb the net. I find it pretty impressive that this guy knew how to use a repeater. Cool. Okay. I was a little surprised that net control let it pass, but this was a terrible storm, and under the circumstances, there's no reason to get salty. Who knows? Maybe the guy will get his ticket. Did anyone else happen to hear this? Thumbs up to that. Uh, the first comment, well, the most popular comment, 455 upvotes. Net control, K2DMG. K2DMG is Daniel. I don't know this person, but he was the one in the news article from the last video I posted. He has been rocking it. He explicitly said on the air the other day, I don't care if you have a license or not. If you need help, key up and we will get you help, paraphrased. And that's the right thing to do. Life safety takes precedence over FCC rules. If you have a call sign, great. If not, get your need out and don't clog up the net. But to those of you who have been involved with the net or recovery effort at all, I applaud all of you. I feel like we all owe K2DMG a beer. I'll, I'll buy in on that. I'll buy him a beer if I ever meet him face-to-face. -face. Literally, in the FCC rules, if in an emergency or life and limb license restrictions are suspended, techs have full use of bands and power, as do non-licensed individuals. It's all about getting the information out and help in. That is an accurate statement. That is an accurate statement, but I want to make clear also that if your internet or cell phone or landline phone or satellite phone is up, then technically speaking, 
it is against the FCC rules to key up on a radio service that you don't have a license for. Now, I hear it said a lot of times there's too many, too much gatekeeping in ham radio. There's too much this. There's too many people who blah, 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 all this crap. In reality, okay, all of the dumbasses who care about the rules are trolling you on the internet. These guys typically don't get on the air much, much. There's a lot more helpful hams who want to help you in times of emergency, then there are those that want to ridicule you for not having a license, okay? And we know that in this situation, post-Hurricane Helene in the North Carolina area, cell phones and power was down for at least two days. I think maybe three or four days we're hearing it this time. I, in fact, I don't even, at the time I'm recording this video, I'm not even sure it's back up everywhere. So we know cell phones were down. We know power was out in multi, a multitude of places. This guy was asking for a water truck to be delivered to his location kind of important so that is the thing you have to look at yeah even if he had a cell phone maybe he tried to call him maybe he had a cell phone he tried to call tried to call tried to call and he keeps getting a busy signal or a call dropped or no service so he used the radio instead again hats off to him i'm i'm impressed he knew how to use a repeater yeah maybe he should go get his license so i'm glad he did what he did and then after that, uh, the next comment says, which is exactly what amateur radio band was intended for and how it should work. Great job to everyone, 100%. And why I implore everyone I'm close to to even have a Baofeng with the basics, including low, uh, local ham radio repeaters in it, and have done so for family. What I want to stress to others is that the rule in Part 97 is only applicable to Part 97. Unlicensed people transmitting on local public safety have been fined for it. Yes. In other words, okay, so what he's saying there... I, it took me a second to, to read that. What he's saying there is that you have that privilege. You have emergency traffic capabilities on ham radio frequencies, not on police and fire. So if you somehow get a hold of a radio with police and fire frequencies in it and you're able to key up. Now, in a life and death situation, according to the FCC rules, even that's allowed. Key up your local fire, say, man, there's something happening here right now and my family's in danger. I need help here right now. Okay, do that. But he's talking about more Part 97 uh, ham radio frequencies here in this description. In fact, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to set up emergency comms, you have to set up an HF station in a disaster area to send traffic into and out of a station, don't you think you might want an amplifier? I highly recommend Expert Amplifiers sold at Main Trading Company in the United States. They are lightweight, portable, full legal limit amplifiers. Known for their excellent RF characteristics and also for the very good remote control capability through the CAT interfaces of almost all manufacturers. They carry a two-year warranty and have repair centers all over the USA and worldwide. Check the link in the description below for more details about these amplifiers and thank you to Expert Amps and Main Trading Company for sponsoring this video. So this is pretty, this is a pretty good comment right here. A satellite phone is a better choice than a UHF VHF radio. No, it's not. However, I freely admit that sat phones are undeniably more, much more expensive. On the plus side, there's a minimal learning curve. If you can operate a cell phone, walk outside and see the sky, you're good to go. If $35 is in your emergency comms budget, then I would say build a Yagi, get a second Baofeng, and learn how to use the ham satellites because they're a pretty good chance that whatever disaster took out your cellular comms is probably going to take down the repeaters as well. Well... As we have seen in this situation, that is not the case. Not always, but it's a gamble and depends on the repeaters. To rely, to rely on radio, you really need HF. Uh, there's some truth to that, although this most of this calm situation for this specific hurricane uh, post-relief effort has been over VHF. And presumably it's on that repeater that's 6,000 feet in the air because it's on top of a mountain, which apparently was not hit by the hurricane. I've had my HF radio for a long time, and despite using it daily, I'm still finding new capabilities. It's mind-boggling what has been packed into a modern HF radio. If people want to become amateur radio operators, that's great. If not, they would be best served by a satellite phone if they can afford it. Listening in, and this is the best comp, this is the best reply to that. Listening in and taking part in an emergency net would give valuable situational awareness, which a point-to-point -point satellite call wouldn't give and I've already thumbs up that. So this is what this is what people don't understand about radio versus well there's one thing. One thing people don't understand about radio versus any type of phone, okay? You pick up a phone, you dial one person. You're talking to one person. 
I pick up a radio and I call out over a repeater or, or over HF, and I'm talking to dozens, hundreds, thousands of people. Who knows? Who knows how many people I'm talking to? Because it is not point to point. It's not a one-to-one -one conversation. So a satellite phone is not a bad idea, but for him to say it's better than radio, I think I, I disagree with that statement. I really do. And that's the and that's the basic gist of all of this right here. The big issue with sat phones is that most people don't realize in these emergencies is that they only help the owner and those the owner knows and who and who the owner talks to. You have to know someone to call them. Ham is better for the masses because you just get you just need to find the frequency. You don't have to know anyone just to get the message out. That's well said too. I'll th I'll upvote that. You can get a Garmin inReach for two ninety nine. That's three hundred bucks. Okay, for something that you're going to use very seldom. Okay, they're rugged and seem to be well regarded. However, you may already have a device capable of satellite comms in your pocket. The iPhone, yeah, the uh, so the iPhone thing. Blah 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 blah. When all else fails, amateur radio gets through. I respectfully disagree with your Satcom opinion. I as do I. I, I disagree with that opinion as well. I wonder if finding the emphasis data without the computer device and all that is required to support them, if not very easy. Uh, too many people don't realize this. In true emergency, all rules are effectively suspended. Okay, so he's he's back to talking about the non-licensed operator on the net control. So I replied to this comment here. Daniel K2DMG has indeed been exceptional here. I've been monitoring from Sydney, Australia using the Broadcastify feed. One thing I haven't seen mentioned here is yet is the TV news article. Okay, that's in the video that hopefully my video that you've already watched from a couple days ago has that information in it. So hopefully you've watched that. I put part of that video into a video recording I made myself today. I'll be posting this later this week. And by the time you watch this video right here, you will have seen that. If not, go back and watch it. So there's other people praising him for his great job he did at Net Control and for how he handled this guy without the license on the air. So yes. In an emergency, and I've said it before, in an emergency, you don't need a license. If you actually need help, there are hams out there who are monitoring who will help you. I am one of them. I'm not going to ask. I'm going to say, hey, what's your call sign? Okay, what's your name? What do I call you? Okay, and then we'll get you some help in an emergency relief situation like this. But now, now that the emergency has passed and now that you see how valuable radio is, Maybe now is the time to get a license. Maybe now is the time to start studying and learning more about radio, even if that radio is a GMRS license. All of this that we've talked about today happened on a 2-meter, 145.19, I think it is, 2-meter ham radio repeater. It could have very well happened on a GMRS repeater. In fact, there might be some GMRS comms going on in that area. If you know about any GMRS comms going on in the North Carolina area, Post Hurricane Helene, please put a comment below to an article or a repeater that's being used or something like that. It's very possible that GMRS has been a very helping hand in this situation as well. Okay, but this this news article is specifically about an informal net run by K2DMG and others on this North Carolina repeater at 6,000 feet for relief efforts post Hurricane Helene. Hats off to everybody. I want to give everyone an applause myself, just like several comments on this Reddit article was. Great job, folks. Great job in handling the unlicensed operator. This is how more of us should be doing unlicensed comms, especially during an emergency. 73 guys, check out all the links in the description below. And check out these videos over here if you want to watch some more stuff on my channel.